Welcome, welcome, uh, welcome yeah. Ross. Oh, you to the uh, we're on the BTS Creative Academy podcast. Um, so at the moment we're currently at the Romford Film Festival. Mm. Um, I found you here. You were showcasing some of your experiences that you've had out in the yes. out in the movie world. Yes, I've been very lucky to have been part of uh, a, few, a few movies. Yes, and uh, in particular, a very big one. In particular, big big name. Oh well, you know, if that would be the Star Wars, then yes. <laughs> yes. So tell me, tell me a little bit about Star Wars. What what was that like to to be part of that, to, to come into that world? Well, if I'm honest, I don't think they've actually uh, thought of a word to describe the feeling I had mm -hmm. uh, working on those. Um, being a being a very big uh, Star Wars fan anyway, growing yes, up, yeah. I had all the, like all the figures and the. Uh, uh, it's, uh, like make up stories with the, like with the uh, mm -hmm. action figures I had and things and uh, and then to actually be real enough to then uh, set foot on those impressive fantastic uh, like amazing like uh, spaces that you are in your own little like play uh, like a play set in a way but the, like you're in your, the playground yes. that you had when you was a child and you had your toys like me yes. had your Star Wars toys Absolutely. that you were playing with yes. then all of a sudden in adulthood you're going into another playground and being one of those toys yes. <laughs> weren't you yeah, essentially much, yes. so who, who did you for those that don't know who did you play what, what was your your role within Star Wars well um, on I worked on The Last Jedi mm -hmm. and uh, I worked with Andy Serkis to breathe life into the character of uh, Supremely the Snoke. So Andy was the motion capture and uh, the voice, but I was the physical body you see on the screen. Right. So I got to wear the gold robes mm -hmm. uh, to do sort of like all the walking down to um, Kylo Ren and uh, to berate him for mm -hmm. his, uh, his, his, what he was doing and uh, to be quite menacing, but still quite um, fragile at the same time because mm -hmm. Yes, he's powerful, but he's also sort of like still, you know, got a part of him that are quite, you know, so very fragile. So uh, yes, it was. It was so you was the experience. you was the physical embodiment of. Yes. Is it was it Empress S Supreme, my, my, supremely? supremely my son's yes. going to tell me off because he's a huge <laughs> Star Wars fan. So the, the fact that I I stuttered there for a moment. No, <laughs> but totally. supreme. Leader, supreme leader, Snoke. Snoke. Yes. Wow, that's just quite a big character to to be part of and well, to bring the, bring that to life. Yes. <laughs> big, tall. <laughs> yes. yes. I, I, no, I, 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 sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I was just say that I, I felt that um, to be basically in charge of all the uh, enemies, see, the the being be Kylo Ren's boss and uh, and things. And I'm, and when I when I sat on that throne for the very first time, mm -hmm. I was like. This is going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, I just don't want to mess things up, but it's going to be absolutely yeah. Incredible. Was there a bit of nerves there? Oh, absolutely. As you came into it, because I mean, there's some there were some big names yeah, uh, involved I'm, with that film, and it's a big franchise. Well, I'm, I'm I'm working directly with uh, Daisy Ridley mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Adam Driver, and working with Andy Serkis, mm -hmm. which I've always wanted to work with Andy Serkis, even before. Uh, he, his roles in, in Star Wars, yes, yeah. and uh, so I admire the man, and uh, to just have that opportunity to work with him and to learn from him as well, mm -hmm. was just, uh, it will stay with me forever. What, what do you think you learned from him then? What was the takeaway that you, you got from spending that time with Andy Serkis so closely? Well, because um, uh, Snoke is a hologram in The Force Awakens, mm -hmm. um, they didn't really know how he was going to sort of interact with Adam Driver and Daisy Ridley and, and, and things being on set. There was, there was it was just like in a, the in the first film. There was just a little teaser, wasn't there? Yeah, it was, it it was, was a, just a, an it image. Was a, yeah, yeah. That, mm -hmm. that it's like sort of it's like a, a, a hologram and things, and that's what they were talking from. So uh, Ryan Johnson wanted a fully fleshed out character to be on the screen, but they, but I sense that they wanted someone even taller than. Kylo Ren to make him like quite impressive and sort of like foreboding and things mm -hmm. and to be quite menacing um, and I was just very lucky that they uh, they thought that my height was um, the thing and uh, but so, so how tall are you well I'm, I'm seven one okay uh, so and I've always had roles of like, using my height for, for, for roles so which I don't mind being like typecasted for mm -hmm. uh, tall obviously tall things as I'm, I'm very tall but then I've also done um, uh, like films and things where I've 
been smaller, but then grown into something larger on, on camera sort of thing. So it's just, it's fine. I, I love, I love doing all that. Mm -hmm. But what I learned uh, with Andy is that like through his movement and he's like uh, how he, he manipulates his body to, um, to change into different, into different forms and, and things to tell a story, to, to use your body to, to, as, as language, in a way, mm. to, to speak to people, on, on, uh, uh, the audience, but without actually saying a word. Right. So, um, so he and I, we, we had full reign of how he was going to move, and in a way, um, like the robes themselves, because they are quite uh, royal, and like with, with the gold, and it's, uh, it's like a, an eye line for people, because it's all dark reds and blacks on the throne room. Mm -hmm. So your eyes going straight to that impressive, um, symbol of authority with the with the gold robes, and so on a on a, on a taller person, the robes move differently than what say a shorter person would be, and I mm -hmm. think that's what they wanted. And I'm hoping that it came uh, came across on screen, and my performance uh, worked well. How do um, how do you feel your performance came across when you sat back and you watched that on the big screen? When you saw Star well, Wars open if, up, if and I'm, then you were there. <laughs> well, if I'm honest, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I haven't really seen it that often because yeah, I'm, I'm my own worst critic. Because I, I, yes. I, I mean, I, I've seen it. I saw it at the cast and crew screening, mm -hmm. and uh, then I, I was like, "Wow, well, that's brilliant!" Because you do a lot more than what's shown. Um, but when I saw it on screen, I was like, "Okay, it's 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 kind of weird seeing yourself because from different, you you you're, you're there when it's being shot." Mm -hmm. And you're, you're um, there as a, like, as, a, as watching it for the first time then, mm. um, and I have seen it once or, uh, once or twice more. But it's but easy. I, I'm, I'm honoured. I'm honoured and proud to be a part of it. Mm. And then, uh, as I say, I uh, after that, I uh, went on to do another uh, Star Wars film, uh, Solo: A Star Wars Story, which I then. Uh, it was a different a, character. Oh, a different character, yes. yes or a different character. I, I, it was like a, a boy who dream come true for me because mm -hmm. uh, I got to play a Wookiee. Wow. <laughs> and uh, it was... Um, I, I, I was a Wookiee at my, um, my drama school oh, audition. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Did they, you wear the fur? <laughs> no, no, no. The, it was a moment where we was asked to improvise and right. we was asked to create a character. And all that came into my head was a Wookiee. Well, they are lovable. They, you, yeah. can't, you can't beat a Wookiee. You can't beat you know. a Wookiee, that's for sure. Because if you try and beat a Wookiee, they pull their arms out of your sockets. <laughs> uh, but you got, to, you got to be one in real life. Yes. That yes. must have been uh, quite warm in that costume. Well, it was extremely hot. Mm. It was extremely hot. But I tell you, well, before I go into that, so that, that, that experience, I was actually lucky enough to work with Peter Mayhew back in 2007. Mm -hmm. Because as I was living in uh, Bristol at the time, and they were doing a 30th anniversary of, of Star Wars, and they invited Peter Mayhew and his wife Angie, and uh, Kenny Baker uh, down to this um, memorabilia shop there. Mm -hmm. But they wanted someone to dress up as Chewbacca, a bit like a Comic Con sort of uh, experience. Mm. Uh, and I only was literally popped in there to sort of like buy something, and they said, "Look, would you be interested in a, in a nanosecond?" I said, "Yes." <laughs> uh, so I was there on the day in all the um, Chewbacca uh, say costume, mm -hmm. and then um, Peter uh, like so, so, so spoke to me and said, "Look, I'll show you how to walk like a Wookiee, mm -hmm. hold the bow cast, and how to roar." Uh, like a Wookiee, so I had a master class for the man himself, and I thought, well, if that's the closest I'm going to be on a Star Wars movie, I'm still going to die a happy man. Yeah. And then, ten years later, I'm doing it for real, and I had, I still had Peter's uh, sort of tuition in my head, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, I'm I'm hoping that I can do him proud. You know, yes, it's amazing that I'm in this position to do it, mm. but I want him to see it and go, do you know what, you know, it, it's. Well, there what kind, what kind of tips did he tell you about the, the type of character then? To well, he, he said that you, um, that when you when you walk, you, when you're, normally you're walking like this, as you as you have been, but you're going to walk more like a like a more animalistic sort of way, and mm. and have more like a um, strength to your your arms, your legs, etc. Because you are a powerful mm. creature. Yes, you're you're friendly, lovable, and cuddly, but you've got to be also quite um, strong and uh, emphasise. How you um, how you walk and, and things. It's, yeah. uh, but no, I I, um, I on that on that 
amazing. Again, all the sets on Star Wars are amazing. In fact, every set I've really worked on is, is great. Mm -hmm. But to be just sort of like sharing my experience with three other um, tour lectures who, who are Wookiees as well, who have now become my brothers from a different mother sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just an, it, 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 an experience that I would never ever like forget it was just um, it's going to live it's going to live with you forever that, absolutely, that, that absolutely. time yeah. fondly oh absolutely oh yeah no <laughs> yeah. no I mean, brilliantly i mean yes, yeah. they're, yes they were long like good, good they're hard, it's hard work working yeah. on a film isn't it I've, yeah. I've done a lot of i've done a lot of film work extra work yeah. essay work walk on parts and yeah it's um it's not it's not always easy is it because like you say long days yes, but, and it's but, demanding yeah. and it'll push you to your push you to your limits sometimes yes, won't but, it? Like, but on that but because i think it's one of the fact that we were all like i think we were all star wars fans mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it was a long day or hard day because you've still got a smile on your face because you're in that you know i, I figured that it was about only about 15 people in, in mm -hmm. the entire world have there been a wookie so i'm now one of them 15 people and there might be more now, but at the mm -hmm. time, I was like thinking, like, uh, you know, one you of, get in there. one of a small club, yes, mm -hmm. pretty much, ironically. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, no, I, I was thoroughly enjoying myself on there, and I had a smile every day, mm -hmm. even though I was sweating a lot uh, in the in them suits. It's like, yes, it was a hot day outside when we we're doing it, but in the mm -hmm. actual tunnels, um, it was like all enclosed and everything else. And yes, it did get very warm very quickly, but we had. A lovely team of people um, giving us water and air and things down our suits. So you're well looked after. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. No, Lucasfilm and Disney are, are, are brilliant <laughs> with that, and um, and, the, and the creature department with uh, Neil Scanion and and their team are awesome as well for, for, uh, for doing that. So um, yeah, no, I'm I'm very fortunate and very lucky to have been in those positions to, to do it and and then going on to doing like conventions and mm -hmm. meeting the fans and things and sharing the stories that they love I mean now that they have another side of going to these comic cons because so they, they can meet the uh, actors that are in the characters they've seen on screen mm -hmm. and then they get a much better sort of understanding of the film and the enjoyment of the film uh, they feel they, a, I, I assume they feel a deeper connection yeah. with the film I hope so. Um, what, yeah, why do why do you think that people go, go and attend these comic cons? They're getting bigger and bigger, aren't they? Yeah, well, I um, think it's purely because I think it's escapism with all the with all the stuff that's happening outside, unfortunately, in the world and mm -hmm. things. Or maybe they just want to like, you know, um, they enjoy that character so much they want to be like dressed up as that character because they say it's just uh, they just love the films, love the mm -hmm. characters, and and therefore uh, enjoy the whole mm. the whole the whole world of it all. Yes, yeah. And yes, you're right, the, 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 the Comic Cons have um, expanded over the years mm -hmm. and the amount of time and effort that they take to make these costumes is just is wonderful and remarkable. Mm -hmm. and it's, you think, well... Um, do you see people yes. dressing up as your characters? Do you no, see, I, I've, do you I've see only that? seen... I've, I went to... I was in France and I went to one of the conventions there and there was a gentleman who dressed up as Snoke and mm -hmm. it was... It was like a very much out of body experience because it's like there's someone dressed as my character that I was actually on screen for, and now I'm looking like, at looking at him. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and uh, he said like, how, "How did you? Um, could you tell me, teach me how to, how to move like Snoke?" And so I'm now actually having a like a teaching thing that mm -hmm. I then got taught by. It, it was just all. It's very, like the circle, like full, like, yeah. yeah, full circle almost. Yes, yeah. and it was but it's wonderful, and I feel very like touched and honoured that they want to dress up as. That couch, and I'm sure Andy would probably say the same thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, and it's just brilliant. The fact do you that enjoy the Comic Con circuit? Do you enjoy going out there into the world and meeting these people? Oh, abso absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, is this what is look, one of the reasons why we do it is to put smiles on people's faces mm. and uh, and to see someone's face light up and they or really when they realize that the person that is like, like, look at your look at your posture, then they look at you, and then look at your poster again. And then it takes them a second to register the fact that this person is that character that you, mm. that you loved watching on screen. And I, yesterday, uh, there was one little boy who, um, I think it was his birthday, and he said, like, oh, I'll, I didn't, it took him a second to clock mm. what was going on, and, I was, and he said, uh, oh, I love Star Wars. I, I've always wanted to meet uh, someone in Star Wars, and I said, well, funny enough, I was in Star Wars, I think, oh, really? Who did you play? And I was like, I was a Wookiee. And he was like, Mummy, Mummy, it was a Wookiee. <laughs> oh, my God. And, like, he really loved it. And uh, so and that's, what, that's kind of what we, why we do it, you mm. know. So that's why we, like, because it's the meeting the fans and, meet, and putting 
enjoyment of everything back in their days and stuff, and they had a much better day for it. And I guess that's the whole cool. movie making process, isn't absolutely. it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, what's really behind that putting the, these stories out there into the world? Yeah, it, it, it's because people want to watch films and they, they want to like sit back and enjoy it. And then also, you you know the value Star Wars has given to your life, don't you? Well, yeah. If you if you think back to when you was a what impact that had, I had I had the same impact watching yeah. those movies for the first time and that escapism, absolutely, yeah, into a it, into, into another world. Yeah, and it's just and what what was, what was even more incredible is the fact that I've been lucky that my body is now because of, of the of the snow. I'm now got like figures mm -hmm. of, of like and and now I've got figures of of, the, of that character. Mm. And so now uh, people are now playing with, I, mean, I imagine they might be playing with them, uh, of, of the Snoke figure. Mm -hmm. And it's like how I was when I was playing with the figures of like Cher Chewbacca, the piece of mate you played. So again, it's all around all in the full, full circle. circle. And it's, it's just, mm. it's amazing and cool and what a wonderful thing to be a part of. Mm. So where did this all start for you? Did you, did you go... Did, was you an actor well, first? No, no, was no, there no, really. no I, you know, because it is, it is acting, isn't it? It is yes. performing. Um, so where did it start? Well, uh, I, I've always, always been very creative, and mm. I went to art and art college and uh, studied animation and uh, and design, and um, so I, I kind of like did more of the animation side, like the, like the, the drawings and anything else first. And then a member of my family was in uh, the original Tomb Raider films with Angela Jolie. Mm -hmm. And he said there was an agency looking for tall people. So I, I joined up and uh, nothing happened for, for a little while. And then uh, my first like, project I worked on was a, a, a Stephen Polikoff film called Gideon's Daughter, mm -hmm. and where I just played a, a tall, uh, I think the title was a tall, a, a, a tall Texan with a character. Mm -hmm. Um, but it so, was, is this more? Uh, is, this is more than being just an extra in the film, isn't it? You're heavily involved, an extra or a supporting yeah. artist. Yeah, I, mean, I was an well, yeah, I was an SA, mm. uh, like they say that's how it started off with. But I, I just got the like quite a um, featured roles mm -hmm. through that though, because of, because of the height. Yes. Um, yeah. And uh, but I got to like meet people on the set and and understand about the films mm -hmm. like during the. Breaks and things and like a bit like on a bit like on the on the Star Wars sets because it'd be a long turnover periods, mm -hmm. and um, so yeah, I, I I kind of like felt I could understand a lot more about the film processing, well, whilst I was waiting around to be to be used, mm -hmm. um, and then that that that, that had uh, Bill Nye and uh, Miranda Richardson and uh, Tom Hardy in it, mm -hmm. and it was like these people have watched on the screen before and everything else and it was like that's really really cool and I, I and then I, I personally started to enjoy it more and then, and then I had um, I, a, a succession of uh, TV um, things pop up like mm -hmm. uh, I mean <laughs> sort of name drop but I had uh, like a bear's tail which has been off from both select uh, come up and again they wanted yes, like yeah. someone tall was like to play a tall schoolboy and everything else. How, how does that make you feel? Like, are, are you uh, completely okay with your physicality being being used for ent well, entertainment and uh, for a career going forward? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I look, I'm rubbish at basketball. So, I I use my height, I've, I've always, but I've still got that interest in like drawing and animation and and, mm -hmm. and those sort of things. But if if my body could be used to um, make a character come alive, uh, then I don't mind being monsters or robots or zombies and, mm -hmm. and things because it's just it's how my body is. And mm -hmm. yes, I am quite a slim person as well. And in, in, in that effect, that I can be, use my body more, 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 more creature-like and, mm -hmm. and things. So it's, I, I honestly, I love, I love all that. I love it. And it's, it's why I do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it if I didn't like it. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So... What's, what do you do? You hope to do more of this kind of work? Are you always seeking? Does it does it work that now that you've been such large char large characters, <laughs> <laughs> now that you've been these big you know big large <laughs> tall characters, yeah, does that lead on to other characters now? Well, I mean, I would I would hope that uh, people might see my my work and go, oh, you know, we need we need someone tall for or we need someone like Ross for, like like Ross for for, mm -hmm. our, for our things. And but as I say, I. Um, is it not necessarily because you're into the animation as well? It's not necessarily a career path that you're 
chasing well, or following. No, no, it. no. I, 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 I love being on a set, mm -hmm. whether, right? But I say with like as a as a, as a background thing. I mean, I, I so I trying to make a film as well, and uh, so I I do all the storyboarding and and the, and, the, and the sketching out of like the characters and things and mm -hmm. and pl uh, pre planning and, and things, and so. Um, but I, I spent like six years in, in art college uh, to sort of honing my skills and mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, so while I'm not maybe not doing the filming like, as an actor sort of and I can then do the other uh, parts of the media as well mm -hmm. so it's a big whole world world a whole world and it's a big tree of um, of media and different branches to it. So. Yes, yeah, you don't have to stick to, to one thing, do you? No. You can go and explore others. And do you find there's any opportunity for learning in one area that you can bring over to another side of your... Oh, ab absolutely, yeah. yeah no, as, as I said before, like when, you know, when I was like, like understanding about how like, the uh, editing and how the uh, cameras w work on, on, a, on a set or something, I can then sort of like... I don't want to be just a one-to-one -one trip pony sort of thing. I, 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 I quite like to know everything about that mm -hmm. at all because in some ways then it, it makes me, uh, say, a better actor, but say I know what the director wants or where to go and how to actually familiarise myself with the environment that I'm working in. Mm -hmm. And I then, I, I, don't, I, I don't, it just makes me feel more centralised in, into, in, into a character that, that, um, that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've just worked on on something, I can't say too much about it, but um, where that came into play because I had to know, I had to know where things were on on a on on a set sort of thing to um, make sure that I don't bump into things, for instance. Okay. You know, so because mm -hmm. uh, um, so I just I said because I move my body in such a way mm -hmm. that uh, might take up quite a lot of the screen, for instance. Uh, so I don't I have to make sure where things are to to move about from A to B without falling over B and C and D. Where is the movie industry at the moment? With uh, I I feel there's a an overuse of CGI over well, over real prosthetics and real real movement and real people getting involved. Or is it kind of taking a little bit? <laughs> is there a shift back? You see, I've seen it in well, Star Wars. There's yeah. a bit more of a shift yeah, back to the I mean, puppeteering and the monsters and things. Yeah, as I say, I, well, to, the only way I can describe it is to talk about both the Last Jedi and, and Solo, mm -hmm. where the Last Jedi had a lot more CGI, I believe, than say Solo. Mm -hmm. I think because uh, the fact, obviously, Snoke is. Well, it's like it's, it's, it has CGI used on him. Yes, okay, it's my my body frame, mm -hmm. but obviously CGI was put on, on top of me to blend it all together. So I I've, I've kind of been a CGI sort of character in a way. Yes, um, and you know it's, it's used very very well and and to do it. Um, I think I hope I won't get in trouble saying this, but. Uh, on the on the Matrix, I think it's the se second one, Matrix, the rev uh, Revolution, I think it might be called, right, or, okay. or Reloaded. Mm -hmm. There's a bit where they uh, are kind of um, Neo is uh, fighting all the Agent Smiths in that, I'm going to say playground or whatever it is. Yes, yeah. back at the yeah, back the, alley. Yeah, yeah. It just looks like a computer game. Yes, it doesn't. And and, it, and I feel when you see something like that, you switch off as an audience member. Yeah, it doesn't engage you. You don't. You don't. You, you don't care. Yeah. Anymore because it, it looks it looks fake. Um, there's there's a definite disconnect when humans aren't aren't involved. Yes, absolutely. No, you're right. And I and so I think uh, when CGI is used in its right full mm -hmm. amount of amount is not over the top or anything else. I think it just works with the rest of the film. I think it's when it's used as like a a cheaper way of doing it or a way to sort of cut corners, a way to yeah, fill it, just fill in the gaps. But when it's used properly and it's used as a supporting tool, mm. then it looks right and then it feels right and then we we don't even notice it's there. Yeah, it becomes, it becomes mm -hmm. like a fluid part of the screen. Yes. yes. But then with Solo, yes, there was still uh, CGI used, mm. but um, especially with the, with the, with the uh, like, there was a lot more practical effects Used, mm -hmm. I, I feel anyway, and uh, things, and it just makes it more. I don't know. It makes it more sort. Of, how can I put it? More 
I say realistic, but more sort of uh, grounded, I suppose. Mm. It's more like there's more sort of heart, heart to it, I suppose. Um, maybe heart's not the right word, but it's just, it's just, it's different. It just feels different. Yeah. You know? But it, it's, it's, yeah. So I say CGI in its rightful place is, is when, it's, when it's great. When it's OTT, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you're right. It's a bit too much for people to actually sort of like get involved with. So you've been involved with a lot of motion capture. Was that used within Star Wars and? Well, with, 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 the, with the Last Jedi, yes. With the Last yeah, Jedi, obviously, I've been seeing Andy in his motion capture suit. Because um, there's a lot of schools popping up teaching much yes. motion capture now. Yes. Do you think that that's a, a particular skill that you need to to learn outside of rather than just going and doing it? Is well, it something you, you need if, like if, an accreditation in? Well, I mean, it, it, it's it's hard one to really answer. I mean, if you, if you want to actually get in, involved in mm -hmm. motion capture that can be used for computer games um, uh, or, um, or 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 films, then obviously that's something you, you need to probably know about. I mean, what's different to normal a normal acting, normal performing in motion capture? What do you need to to consider extra? Well, I mean. <laughs> If you are trying to uh, like be turned into like an ape, for instance, for, mm -hmm. like, for, for like Andy's uh, work on Planet of the Apes and things, he uses his body to to be that creature. He's, you know, he's, he's not a, he's not a man. He's he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an ape. He's a, you know, he's a gorilla. He's, he's he uh, he has that motion within something. Mm -hmm. Or even when, when he when he played Gollum, that sort of stuff. Again, it's it's it's, it's how he becomes more subtly. Um, Moving and everything else, and you don't do that with a a, a human, sort of thing, mm -hmm. like with a man or a lady or whatever. So, and that motion capture suit, so like, you can then manipulate the body that way, and then you can turn it into that character. So, mm -hmm. if that's if that's that, if that's the avenue you want to pursue down, then I think you have to understand movement first mm -hmm. uh, before you even put on the suit, and. Um, because the suit there is just a tool. The mm. actual your actual body is, is the main tool as such, and it's like and, and the mindset as well. So if you have all those connected, then you know you, you should be, you should do okay. And uh, Andy's um, <coughs> he formed the um, Imaginarium uh, down at Eden Studios, mm -hmm. and uh, they're like oh, an awesome um, studio to work work on mm. work with. I mean there are others obviously, but uh, that's how I. Kind of understand his work from, and uh, he's a, a pioneer of the of the. Uh, oh, he's changed the industry, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, 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 I've got, I go on about Andy, but he's he's, well, he's just a really nice guy as well, and a very nice guy to. Uh, well, and someone you've with. had a close connection with, haven't well, you? Well, uh, yeah, close, and, uh, playing the same part, you must have collaborated very closely during well, that time. We've also uh, he also directed me on his uh, on his film Breathe mm -hmm. as well, so. And he said that uh, we've got something, something in mind, that, like a character in mind for, for, for you, if you're interested. So it's just uh, awesome to be not only working with him, but also working with him under his direct, uh, directorial vision as well. So yes. it's just amazing. amazing. It was an amazing time. And uh, mm -hmm. I hope that uh, I can still continue with the, with the acting as well as everything else. Yes. Tell me a little about, but you mentioned about them having the right mindset. What is that within the film industry? What is the right mindset? Well, you've you got you to you like what you do. I mean, otherwise, it's, if you just think it's just a, a, a way to just pay the bills, mm -hmm. then you're not really invested in wanting to be an actor or, or in acting as such. You just mm -hmm. just go for the motions. You just got to get, when you're in the mindset of like, okay, this is the character that, that I am, therefore I'm not Joe Bloggs, I'm now this. Mm -hmm. this, this this character for the duration of the shoot sort of thing and you and you understand the character and you you try and develop your own sort of like taking away on the character because you, he's your 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 him or her and uh, and therefore you have to show it on screen to your best best abilities mm -hmm. um, and whether you might think this Maybe, maybe maybe it's a low budget or a, it doesn't matter about budget actually to honest with films because you can have a no budget, low budget or a, a foot, if you're lucky, a, a brilliant budget. Mm -hmm. But whatever it is, you still have to try and be professional enough to actually um, make that character believable, whatever the character is. Mm. And I think that's important to have that in, in that mindset. Um, Sounds like to me like you're saying commit to the part, commit to what it is that you're doing. Of course, otherwise, otherwise if you don't commit mm. to it, the, the, like anybody who sees it 
or can hear uh, hears about it uh, on on the, uh, how you are on the set. We'll go yeah. well. I we don't want to work with him anymore because he's not or her anymore because of what him and her does and everything yeah. else. So you got to, like in a way you're selling yourself to your next your next part, for instance, mm -hmm. or at least selling that character to the director, saying that this you know you, you know this this is why you chose me. Yes, I, I've seen that a lot on, in particular in movies, uh, actors, performers, not considering that the people around them, that they are the people that might hire them again or not hire them again. Yeah. And yeah, and if the, the mindset isn't right, then people just simply choose not to work with you. Whereas when the mindset is right and you are doing things because you care about the craft yeah. and because you care about the project you work on, other pe that resonates with people and they want you back mm. and they ask for you, don't they? Yeah, oh, I've, I've been very lucky to be asked by, by name mm -hmm. uh, from from producers and stuff, and so they've like because they've said they've heard about how I am and uh, what I can have you bring and, yes, uh, yeah. and everything else. Because like the moment you step foot, not even the step foot on the set, it says when you step foot for the studio, mm -hmm. you are then kind of like you're being part of that film. So you are then uh, respect everyone around you, mm -hmm. and then therefore they'll respect you. Yes, and um, now you go out into the world and you represent Star Wars. Well, yeah, don't you? I, I, yeah, I represent, yeah, represent the, the, the... You're part the, of yes. the Star Wars family now. Absolutely, yeah, no, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm, incredibly, I'm incredibly lucky to be part of the family, and I have many friends who are also part of the, uh, the Star Wars family, and um, there's, we're all a friendly bunch, you know, <laughs> and uh, that's what you got to be. And uh, it's just... It's just a wonderful feeling to be a part of that because it's like I can see myself in the people I meet mm -hmm. at shows or even even the street on the street because it's that's how I felt when I first met the people that I looked up to or, or saw on screen, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know I still I still get um, starstruck. You know I mean it's it, it's. It's still a funny sort of feeling to have, but it's just mm -hmm. like, but you, then you go, well, you know, you're all part and parcel of the, of the same thing now. Mm -hmm. it's, but you still get like, I mean, if I've, if I've got time, I, 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 I met I met Mark Hamill, right, and I was like, oh my god, right, mm -hmm. this. Is well, the the eight year old version of Ross yeah. didn't expect to actually meet him in real life, did he? <laughs> no, <the laughs> you know, I didn't think he'd actually work with him either. But, yes, you know, exactly. It's, like... it, it's not it's not even a consideration. So that when you yeah when you do meet these people that were a big part of your life, yeah, uh, but you've been separated from them. But when they come into it, yeah, that starstruck feeling is is only going to be natural, isn't yes. it? To have that for a moment. To have uh, how, how you know then thoughts probably go through your mind. What should I say? Yes. How should I say it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, you but know. just that, just that normally. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just just to say hello first of all. That always helps. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just be nice and everything else. Don't be, don't be a diva, really. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, you know, it's just. Um, but yeah, he's, and and Mark's a really nice guy, and everybody's nice. I mean, I've, I've no, I haven't met anybody in this year that isn't nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and you just. Sometimes they may not want to talk to you, but like at least at least just they nod and you knowledge and everything else is all cool. Mm -hmm. I'm start again because that was rubbish. I do apologise. No, no, come. We'll take. <laughs> yeah, take a moment. Again. We'll clap again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm talking. I thought I know, my head is going. You are talking absolute bollocks. <laughs> <coughs> we all do. We all do that from time to time. I, I talk absolute bollocks all the time. In fact, so. no, <laughs> but I, actually, I, I, that's I what I want to say. But it's like it's, it's, it's like pro it's processing it. And I, I find with the the podcast, actually, some of the listeners have been listening in, and they like that honesty. Because yeah. because we most of us do talk a lot of rubbish, <laughs> and we all have little moments where we go. What what are we saying? <laughs> what, are we, what what are these words that are coming out? I, I was literally about to repeat myself, and I was like, "Hang on a minute!" On I a said minute. this before yes. about ten minutes ago. So, mm -hmm. right, I think yeah. I know what I say. It's just I so. I was asking there. you about your right. about your hopes, yes, your yes. dreams. Where 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 are you looking to go in right. the future? Well, you know, all all this is about about luck, mm -hmm. and yes, you might have the talent of yours, but it's luck and in, 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 in the right moments. Uh, I would love to uh, continue with the. Uh, working in the films and um, uh, portraying more characters and uh, and making more characters come alive on screen and uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of what I really love to do. 
Um, I also still want to still do the uh, like the behind the scenes as such, the like the drawing side of it all, and the and the filmmaking process as well. And uh, so that's what I like to really do as well. Um, and you know, if any any conventions uh, come up as well, then that's what I really like doing. Mm -hmm. um, some people just go, well, you know, I've actually I was asked recently, is it uh, is is conventions all you do now? And I say, no, no, it's it's just it's just it's just what comes with it. Mm -hmm. and I've been very lucky. I've I've never ever thought of conventions as just sort of like something to do. No, conventions is bring uh, giving something back mm -hmm. uh, to the people who watch the films mm -hmm. and. Um, I, I like to say I love meeting people and inspiring people as well, and in, in turn, sometimes they actually inspire me, because I know then that I'm doing a good job uh, by putting uh, smiles on kids and adults alike, uh, mm -hmm. faces and, and things, and um, making the whole of this experience even better for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what kind of inspiration can you can you offer to fans for that, that are wanting that connection to? To the movies that you're involved with. Well, I, I was thinking to a, uh, a, a, a young guy um, earlier yesterday, and he wants to try and get into into, into films. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I said, well, the thing is, what you do, you got to, first of all, you got to sit down with yourself as such, mm -hmm. and decide this is if this is what you want to do, um, because you, you're going to get some day, some times where, like, out of ten doors, nine will probably shut. And that, but that tenth door will be your opportunity. Mm -hmm. Don't get disheartened whilst you're going through them nine doors that are shutting, mm. because you've got to like really keep pushing and 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 be persistent and to uh, say to people, look, you know, this is what I can do. This is who I am. That sort of stuff. But don't be confident, but don't be cocky. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you can bring something else with it as well, if you have some sort of like natural ability, that, that helps. But it doesn't always not be in a window. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's, it's who you are, not what you are, and um, you've got the heart for it as well, and the passion, then uh, you'll be okay. Mm. Um, but yeah, so he said that was, that was, no one really spoke to him like that and, uh, and inspired him to go, do you know what, you're right, I was feeling quite disheartened at points where people were saying, oh, you're no good, and that stuff. I said, who, who, who's saying you're no good? Mm -hmm. Right? And he said, well, uh, other people. Yeah, but they're not in your position. Then if, you, if they're teachers, that sort of stuff, they're, okay, they're teaching you something, but they're not, they're not, you can only be... They don't know everything, yeah, do they? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and you can only teach yourself. Mm -hmm. And I said to them that, that it's t even though I'm at an age where, you know, uh, but I'm still learning, you know, even though I've been on these sets and everything else, I'm still learning because I can evolve or develop my skills, mm -hmm. and, um, and that shows through. You know, it doesn't just wash over me and that's it. No, it stays with me from mm -hmm. the, from my next shoot, whatever whatever it could be. So, a hypothetical question for okay. you now: If you could go back in time and speak to Ross before you did th this, yeah. but just before you was about to do Star Wars, what advice would you give to yourself going forward? Well, I would, firstly, I'll say to him, um, say to me, say to him, that I'll say that. Uh, don't listen to the negative uh, people who give who, who give out co horrible comments about your height. First of all, mm -hmm. because you, there are some nasty people out there who uh, say horrible things just because you're a bit you're slightly different to the norm. Mm -hmm. But what is normal? You know, it'd be a boring place if everybody was exactly the same as each other. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so. Don't listen to people that say, oh, you know, what's the weather like up there? Do you play basketball? That sort of stuff. Because, yes, it's annoying, but it's, if that's all they've got, then, there's no, then, then they're, they're not worth worrying about. Mm -hmm. uh, be yourself. Be, because um, that's all you can be. Be, is be yourself. But, um, when you're playing someone, still be yourself, but don't, be, don't turn into some sort of person no one wants to work with. You, know, you, you still be that friendly person, but when you're in that character, you'll be that character. But So I would also say to him that um, things do get better. Things will improve. Um, so I've not actually been asked this before. This is, this is quite, this is quite <laughs> interesting. Um, it, I'd also say that um, you get 
you get to work with people who will stay with you, who will, ins who will uh, inspire you and motivate you to continue going, to continue to, to enjoy what you do. Um, and then I'll also probably tell myself that uh, there are clothes out there that'll fit you. <laughs> <laughs> there are, there are places you'll, fi you, you'll find them, don't worry. Oh, you'll find them, don't worry about that. You know, you have to look high and low, or mainly high, but you'll, uh, yeah. But yeah, and that's, that's what I'll probably say. And in, in turn, I guess that'll probably say that to um, other people who also want to get into the industry. Mm -hmm. you know, like I said earlier, it's you just you have to go with the rough as well as the smooth. It's going to be a bumpy ride, but sometimes there's also some nice smooth, smooth moments as well. As well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we have them. Yeah, I think any. I think I was going to say any career has got its highs and its lows, but that's. I think that's life, isn't it? Yeah. And and you have to you have to ride it. Yeah. Um, and when you're on a downward spiral, there's going to be an upward spiral if you just yeah. keep going. If you Absolutely. just keep going, yeah. moving forward. I've been, I've done I've done quite a few a few. I've been lucky enough to be uh, working on a few a good few a fair few films. Mm -hmm. Star Wars obviously being one of the big biggest ones and that stuff. But any film that I that I work on, I'm proud I'm proud of because it's right. I mean, I've been in that position to do it. Mm -hmm. So it, it, yeah, I'm I'm just very grateful and honoured to have. Uh, been asked to do these roles and, yeah. and things, and uh, you know, and um, well, that shines through. That's de that's definitely. Well, obvious. thank you very much. You did. I, I, I was just had that. Um, I, I can put this. I, I, I've met so many people that I've always wanted to work with as well, mm -hmm. and uh, even I worked on Ar Artemis Fowl, and um, it was like a reunion. For Star Wars, because it was some like of the because everyone the came back, people, yes, mm -hmm. and it, it was just, um, yeah, for me, it, it's just, it was just a, everything I do is just a, a great, I'm very grateful for and uh, mm -hmm. very pleased, yes, wonderful. Well, thank you very much. No, I, I appreciate your time, Ross. Thank you for, for sharing. Thank you. Uh, if anyone wants to follow your career, follow what you're doing, where can we, where can we find you? Yeah, no, I, I'm on, uh, I'm on Facebook, uh, I'm on, let's uh, well, Ross Sandbridge. Uh, or on Instagram at Ross SW Sandbridge. And, and there we are. And we can follow your career on there. Or come and try and find you at Comic Con. Yeah, that'd be lovely. That'd be lovely. Be, yeah. I, I'd love to meet you all. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so thank you. Wonderful. And, uh, Cheers again. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your time, And uh, if anyone was watching and uh, or listening, thank you for, for joining us for this, this conversation. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.